these Knicks in the fourth quarter down by 13 with six and a half left would make a game out of this thing because they were out hustled and out muscled all night against this Grizzlies team. But Julius starts coming alive. IQ starts coming alive. Alec Burks with clutch contributions off the bench. But it was the clutch play of Broadway Barrett, a.k.a. the Nine God, continuing his hot streak. R.J. Barrett would hit three clutch free throws to make this a game and ultimately would tie it. And it was R.J., it was Julius, it was Burke's IQ that would deliver this team to a 133 to 129 victory over the Memphis Grizzlies. Knicks were trashing to Facts. begin this game. But how do we close the game? The right way. They heard, they knew she was going to be on the show tonight and they delivered. <laughs> RJ Barrett did his thing tonight. Uh, I was getting a little worried because they were going away from a little bit, but Alec Burks yeah. is doing what he needed to do. But like you said, a man quickly providing off the bench. Uh, Elf was shelved, even though he was giving us a solid nine points tonight. Uh, it was a great comeback win. It was nice to see us steal yeah. a win for once after the last few games that we've had. So it was nice. At that yep. six minute mark, I, I wrote on, on uh, Twitter, I said, listen, you know, there's very few losses during the season for this team that were due to lack of effort. And I thought this one was headed that way because the, again, the, the Memphis Grizzlies were just outplaying them. They were at more physical. They were on the glass. They were on the boards. Uh, they were getting out in transition. They were just running us out the gym, but give credit to the Knicks because they stuck to it. And New York Grit, as you said, as it was New York Grit. And like I said, it was RJ, man. RJ, once again, continuing his hot performance. When we needed him the most, he delivered. And that was big for him. In basketball, it's not how you start. It's how you finish. It is a game of runs and it is a game of possessions. Shout out to the bench tonight. Rose, quickly, yeah. Burks. They held it down until Randall and RJ could really get going. They had a rough first half. And and notice how I said Rose quickly, Burks. I did not mention Peyton's name. Yeah. Just he just is irrelevant in my conversation tonight <laughs> in any aspect. So we're gonna push that to the side. But RJ, you know, came through in the RJ way, my nine god. And I was ready to go in on him if we lost this game. So it's <clears> not that I'm biased. I just give credit where credit is due. I mean, 20 points from him tonight, 50% from the three-point line, 50 per, 53% from field goal. It's just out of control. He just knows how to come up big in the right moments. And listen, even though Julius Randle's game was like a roller coaster tonight and yeah. he did some things that just made me want to shake him, he still had a triple-double tonight. Still so, had a, a frustrating triple-double for Julius, for sure. Got to give yeah. Julius Randle some props. Although yeah. it was a very up-and-down triple-double yes. earning tonight, mm -hmm. he still put up the numbers. And the New York Grits, baby, we did this. I'm proud. I mean, Julius didn't score his first points until three minutes left in the third. Mm -hmm. You know, RJ got off to a slow start. I don't think he scored his first points until late in the second quarter. You know, the two of them just didn't have it going. Those are your two guns. If they don't have it going, this team is not going to do much. Thankfully, you have D. Rose, your most important point guard on the team. But like I said, it's just a matter of, you know, how do you allocate his minutes where he's most effective? But he gave us 13 first half points, and I thought that was big. Uh, nevertheless, they still found themselves down by as much as 17, down by 13 going into the fourth quarter. Like I said, I thought they were done. But give credit to Tibbs. He made the adjustments. He went to IQ. He went to he went to D Rose for for a bit. Then he went IQ. He went back to Burks as his backup point. He went to Burks as the point. RJ Julius had Taj. Taj ended up fouling out and then went to Noel and he stuck with that lineup into overtime. And give credit. Those were the guys that delivered for us. Um, Burks with 20 points, 16 in, in the fourth in, in overtime. IQ another 20 points. Julius 15 point triple double. Uh, but again, you know, RJ's performance, um, just just not letting, you know, Dylan Brooks get him out of his game because Dylan Brooks was trash talking all day and, and trying to play him tough. RJ hung with it. And, and yeah, it was 20 points. But like I said, three free throws in the fourth. The game tying drive in, into end regulation on John Morant, which was easy money because he saw it. He saw the green light as soon as they got the rebound off the, I think it was a bound tune is miss. RJ saw it. Took John Moran to the cup 
ends up tying it, and then a big three in overtime. So well, well deserved. They they took it and, and they earned a victory, one thirty three to one twenty nine. RJ was just so impressive because it's easy to get inside your own head when you're in the middle of a game and shots just are not falling and you're not playing to the standard that you set for yourself, that your teammates have for you, that the fans have for you, that your coach has for you. It's easy to get into a slump and it's easy to let that affect your entirety, your entire performance rather within a game. And mm -hmm. RJ just proves time and time again, whether it's the bounce back from the previous game or even what he does in the actual game, that he's built for New York, that he's built Built yeah. for these big moments Mental he toughness. has this ability that you know that we've seen progress from last season to this season to just kind of settle himself down and and get out of his own way and take it play by play and have the game slow down and allow it to come to him to where that he can really start producing and and being a contributing factor on that court and we saw it because the rj that started the game was not the rj that ended the game and yeah. it's just really amazing to see someone so young have that mental toughness to bring themselves back to where they need to True be story. to help the team win you, you know the rj barrett is there for the action at any point and yeah even though he had a bad first half he he got the he got the sleepy eyes like he ain't even remember how that the amnesia that he yeah. don't even remember how that first half went because second half he just was a completely different monster and if you look at this not mm -hmm. watching the game you're seeing that he still shot 54 percent from the field he was two for four from the three-point line like he still yeah. did what he needed to do out there because you know he he knows how to he understands how to control the game how to play at his pace yep. um and the game is not over because his shot is not falling to begin with and big time 20 years old 20 years old and he has that kind of yeah. that kind of iq that kind of grit you know what i'm saying that that kind of uh want that dog in him and it's just so it's been great to watch i'm just so excited for this kid and then going up against mr number two overall yeah. pick john morant number two now. versus Let's number three man you know he had that chip on his shoulder definitely Lovely. and and you know give credit give credit to julius ash as we said it was an ugly triple double yeah. you know the grizzlies were doubling him the whole game I don't know if it's the leg injury or just fatigue, but he just seems to be a step slower than, you know, pre-All-Star Julius. But mm -hmm. he, he gutted it out. You know, he made the right passes when he needed to in, in crunch time, and, and he got the job done for us. So give credit to Julius for, for gutting this one out, too. Uh, Ashley, you mentioned Obi. Obi did pick it up. Uh, yeah. But that that's the D-Rose effect. You know, having a competent point guard that can push the pace and play to Obi's strengths. We've seen it time and time again from their debut together in Miami. You know, when when D Rose is out there with Obi, he just makes him better. And then Obi had this dope uh, putback slam off the baseline over Brandon Clark in the fourth quarter as well. So you know, he he seems to be coming along still slowly, but his his confidence at the very least seems to be improving. So you know, it's just one of those things of when were we going to play to his strengths? When were we going to play the Obi ball? And we're seeing that today, or, or last few games, not even just today, last few games, we've seen Obi become more uh, aggressive and more active because that's just how he plays. It was looking like there was a stretch of games where he was just settling for waiting at the three-point line and then bricking them, you know what I mean? Yeah. So seeing him become more active and seeing, like you mentioned, Derrick Rose pushing the pace a little bit. And Emmanuel quickly, too, has found him for a few lobs there yeah. um, in the last few games, this game included. You're just seeing Obi Toppin look comfortable, and that's I, that's more than I think that's more than we could be asking for right now. We need to we want the kid to feel comfortable and be at ease and play his game and not worry about you know if he's a bust or that or third. No, play your game and then the rest will come. And we're seeing that Big right facts. now. He played really well tonight. I think that next season you're going to see a different dynamic where Randall's going to be able to still be the floor general on this team, but it's not going to have to be at an exhaustion type level because Obi's going to be a lot more comfortable playing a role where he's going to be dominant on that floor. Yeah. All right. Well, hopefully with a better point guard too. I think that I think it's twofold. Yeah, I think it's course. it's it's OB's lack of effectiveness and and a point guard is is puts double duty on Randall. So, um, you know, quite questions to be answered in the off season. But for now, you know, we taking this win, man. It was it was really painful to watch this game early on, like just seeing how our offense is not clicking. Um, amazing that RJ has come along with a shot. I never mm -hmm. in a million years thought he would make three three free throws. In that spot, I, mean, yeah. I think he got a better chance of Steve Novak yeah. com coming down the lane with a 360 jump. 360 <laughs> jump. Somehow, some way, uh, RJ has really gotten that stroke together. Obviously, a clutch three, his drive at the end when he said, like you said, you saw the opening. Uh, I guess moving forward, I mean, this game was so huge because I set out before this homestand. We have to sweep this homestand. Yeah. With the Lakers being undermanned, 
with Toronto, we have a chance to put Toronto out of their misery by beating them. Uh, you know, looking at the t- uh, us with our lead for the top ten, we got a five and a half game lead for the top ten. I really want that seven or eight seed, so that at worst we just have to win one game to officially make the playoffs. But to his point, CK, you know, we gotta we gotta own this home this uh, this home stand. You know, we gotta get these yeah. wins on this home stand. Very critical, bro. And we've been doing it this year, and we in, in years in the past we haven't been really protecting the home, protecting the garden. You know, yeah. what I mean, we've had all these other players have their uh, best games of the of the season in the garden, and this year we've been doing a good job with that. Um, and yeah, def- it's definitely important, and it, it's something that can carry on over if we do end up making the postseason. Um, that that's could, that could be in our favor, you know. So it's it's really nice to see uh, how hard this team plays. The ninth game was incredible. I think RJ Barrett. Um, I, I remember I called back when they lost to the Heat and he missed that layup and I said something completely asinine that pissed everybody off in the chat, mm-hmm. which was, I'm glad he missed that shot yeah, because it's going to help him grow in the future. And yeah. it was for a, a night like this. And, yo, we needed that culture-building win. We needed this win. And I, just like you said, down 13, I thought we didn't have it. You know, we, mm-hmm. we definitely didn't right. have that. But once we got close and we definitely once we got into overtime – those three clutch free throws clutch. for RJ Barrett. Once we got into overtime, uh, man, we really needed that, and we came through. So shout out to everybody that contributed tonight, and rest in peace to DMS. Big time. Go up and ask in the comments. Rest in peace. Yo, man, I was just in the fan seats. That's all. <laughs> you know, you guys are the superstars. You know, <laughs> big up CK. Welcome back, Ash. Big up to Ash's pops because this these type of games ain't good for us. <laughs> <laughs> OGs, like 60 years old, 55, man. Yo, we can't be doing this. Cardiac Knicks, Chuck. <laughs> cardiac Knicks, you know man. I only put so much room in the cardiac area, man. Facts. Anyway, uh, <laughs> yeah, man. Um, yeah, and I, and I breathed through all the all the slander tonight. It was it was heavy slander going into the fourth quarter tonight. Yeah. Slander in the slander in the mosh pit, but the energy, <laughs> but the energy of Dark Man X. Kind of seemed like it seeped through the garden and into the Knicks, and it was kind of maybe ordained. I, I, I'm not going to give the Jay Boogie gospel because mm-hmm. only he can. Yeah, <laughs> yo, I know we talking playoffs. I know we talking play ins, but this is play now. This is yeah. now. Every game's a playoff, yeah. man. That's facts, and there's nothing better, man. I'm a Knicks fan since 1967. 67, I was seven. So when a cat comes and says, well, what did you know at seven? I said, seven, I took it a lot. I, I, all right, later on, I called Dave the Butcher, Dave the Butcher. The butcher. But, I, but you know what I'm saying? I used to think Willis Reed's name was Rebound Reed, you know? And, you know, but, and I remember Clyde coming in and not having it together and all of a sudden becoming a superstar through the trade. Mm-hmm. I go back like eight tracks, Cardiac <laughs> and Similac, yo. <laughs> I'm, just saying, I'm just saying, this is, this is, this is good. I'm enjoying every single moment of it. Yes, it's killing me, but it, that's, that's the nature of being a real fan, man. You just don't jump around, man. I'm that's not it. of the generation where we jump around just because there's a popularity contest. You can't purchase the soul yeah. of a champion. That's the it. champions that buy their listen, the, champ, the teams that buy their championships, that champagne tastes like club soda, man. <laughs> I'm telling you, that's it's a, a fact, special, man. special time, a special occasion. And I think that that Dark Man X soul was in the perimeter of the New York City metropolitan area. And that rubbed off on our knickerbockers. How about that? Absolutely, right. man. When they right. came back and fought, New York Grit was on this play, Chuck, 133 to 129 in overtime. 